for that trip and probably no better place for us to start our conversation. So yeah, where are the top recruits in the class of 2026 going to end up? Let's start with Bo Bassett. He's on the U20 world team. He's already a U17 world champ. He's won Super 32. He's won Ironman. Uh, I think both those events he's won twice. Um, this guy's going to be a highly coveted recruit. And uh, I don't know. What do you guys think? I know, Kozak, I know you have a strong opinion. Yeah, I've said pretty much from the beginning, I think he's going to Iowa. He just It just feels like that's, that's where he's going to go. But I know I, I've listened to different interviews that he's been in. I know he, he wants to go through the process. He wants to take as many visits as he can. Um, His graphic yeah. <laughs> alone where yeah. he included, what, like 70 schools? It was quite, yes, I think so. Yeah, he had fun with that, I think. And I think he, was, you know, he did it intentionally to where he's like, hey, you know, if you don't think you have a shot at me, if you think I'm just down to Iowa or Penn State, like, you know, like, I'm, I'm open for my recruiting. So I think he really wants to go through the process. He wants to be – Recruited by as many coaches as he can, take as many visits as he can. But my gut, in my in my heart of hearts, I just feel like he's he's Iowa. I think that's where he'll he'll end up. Um, I won't be you know totally surprised if he goes somewhere else, but that's what I feel. We were kind of talking this morning before the show. Just this morning, Bo Bassett posted on social media his first ever interview he ever did, and it was with Flow Wrestling Christian Piles. Very similar. To a Spencer Lee interview yeah. Christian did way back in and, what, 2009 or something. And, Eight. and yeah, and Christian was actually at Young Guns that day for Spencer Lee's commitment to Iowa. So, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, interesting if, if that comes full circle. But I think, you know, I think Kozak's right that, that he definitely wants to go through the process and, and wants to find out what he can about a ton of different schools. So, I don't think we're going to have any news on Bo Bassett anytime soon i think i think it's gonna you know it's gonna be a lengthy recruiting process would be my guess here's a question for you bray is bo bassett the number one recruit in this class obviously we're splitting hairs it's very very close there's a couple other huge names like Jax forrest trey sean ross you know kind of etc there's a couple other really big blue chippers in this class but if you're a college coach and you can only get one is it bo bassett I think it is because I think this is a guy who, um, you know, not only is training himself to win, but is training himself to be the face of a program. I think he wants to, he wants to be, a, he wants to be a star. He wants to be in the spotlight. He wants the, you know, lights on him, and he and he wants to, you know, like spread the word about whatever team he's part of. And I think you've seen him have a, a kind of a gravitational pull to Bishop McCourt. I don't think that, you know. The, the Bassets are going around calling people and recruiting them to come to Bishop McCourt. I think people are naturally drawn to that. I think they're, they're drawn to that program and they're drawn to the success they're having, but I think they're also drawn to Bo Bassett and his personality. And um, I mean, this is a, a sophomore in high school who already has over a hundred thousand Instagram followers. He's uh, he's, he's got, I mean, you look at his social media account, he's got like a content plan. You know, we do that. We, we have, you know, content plans and you can tell he does too. So um, I think, if you're, yeah, if you're, if you're arguing who's going to have the most success on the mat, it could be him. It could be somebody else. But if you're looking for a face of the program, if you're looking for somebody that, that could potentially help you bring other recruits to town, I think Bo Bassett's the top recruit. Okay, here's another question for you then. Can Penn State now have a face of the program with a lineup that includes so many blue chip recruits, so many multiple-time national champions, multiple guys going, you know, this year for their fourth or fifth title. Can someone still stand out and be the face of the program like that? It's, it's, uh, I mean, there's, there's much more competition, you know, to be the face of the program and, um, and Penn state wrestlers tend to stay like, you know, maybe a little bit out of the media, although, you know, Carter Storacci, that guy's, dynamic he's electric he's got a lot of opinions vocal as anybody he's as vocal as anybody in ncaa wrestling right now 100 percent. and um so you see it happen i mean roman bravo young we did a film about him while he was at penn state so it, it's possible yeah it's possible to be to be in the spotlight and to be a face of a program um but maybe to a lesser degree than than what you see at other programs where like they really build the the brand of the program around a single athlete i think you know at Ohio State right now, it's Jesse Mendez. Uh, you know, at Iowa, it was Spencer Lee for for a long time, um, and at Penn State, I mean, 
probably you would say David Taylor was the face of that program from it was a long time ago, 2011, though. you know, through, through, you know, 11 through 14. But since then, I don't know that there's been one singular face of the program. Um, so it's a great question. So does, I don't want to say that that doesn't take Penn State out of the running, but where do you think Bo Bassett will end up and, or where do you think he should go to college? I think, th- I think this is, probably going to come down to Iowa and Penn state. And I think it's going to be one of those. No, Oklahoma state. Maybe so, you know, maybe, maybe he looks there. Maybe he looks there. Um, I don't know. I, I, I don't know why, but it feels like maybe Iowa and Penn state have a little bit of a head start. And you know, this is, this is a guy who's, who's maybe been thinking about those programs a little bit longer. I don't think Oklahoma state's out of the mix. I mean, you know, David Taylor was right down the road from, from Bo Bassett for a while, but Remember, Bassett didn't train at M2. He wasn't, you know, he wasn't a guy that was going over there. There were some of the Bishop McCourt guys did, like Mason Gibson and Eric Gibson, but but Bo was young guns. He was, you know, he he was part of that. So I don't know how much time he spent with David Taylor. I'm sure it's some. I'm sure he looks up to him. Um, so Oklahoma State probably, you know, in the mix to to a degree. Uh, but it does feel like it's going to come down to Iowa and Penn State. And to me, this seems like one of those commitments that could be up in the air until the very last minute and probably is a coin flip. That's that's how I feel about it. I kind of hope it does go until the last minute and we don't get a a commitment, you know, this fall or spring or or winter because it, it, it kind of makes it more fun like I feel like a lot of these top recruits commit super early. It almost takes the fun kind of kind of out of it, the wind out of the sails a little bit like we've kind of had our our 2024 20, class committed for over a year, you know, those top guys just think about like the hype, like where will Bo Bassett go? We could really have that question for like two years remaining. Yeah. I think he should do, <clears throat> I have the, I have the post here. It's pinned on his Instagram and it, I could read every single one of his top uh, list of top. I will say he, huge snub on the Lopers. No Nebraska. Lopers Carney. didn't make it, but a couple <laughs> other D2 teams. I know. That's what I'm saying. Parkside, UPJ, uh, Pitt Johnstown, uh, Sam Herring of his teammate at Bishop McCourt. The first uh, reply is no Ole Miss. So maybe he could start a program. He'd be that kind of guy. But I think it'd be a good idea if he took all those programs. Uh, he's not going to do it for obvious reasons. But and then like every week you chop one off, or you know you you, you do like a elimination style, style. yeah, like tournament, a, like a tournament, and a rose to you know a school, or you say your summer fling is over or whatever. <laughs> oh, he just goes full bachelor. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and, and that that's how you get a lot of content out of a commitment. Yeah. But I obviously he's not going to do that. I think you guys all nail it though. Um, what one something uh, who brought it up here in the uh, YouTube comments though, but he is uh, he does have a relationship with Rudis and Rudis is based mm-hmm. out of Ohio and has Ooh. a lot of Ohio State connections. Does that add them at least? You know, no one's really talking about him, but that that's something. It's not nothing. Yeah, he said he trained there uh, before U uh, twenty trials as well. So I I think they're I think they're in the running. Maybe like a, a dark horse um, behind maybe Iowa and, and Penn State. But I mean, if you're if you're a guy that's at sixty five kilos. Jesse Mendez is, is mm-hmm. going to be one of the better training partners you could ask for. Yeah, for sure. But also a competition for that 2028 spot, yeah. which I know Bo Bassett is. He considers himself a legit threat to, to make the 2028 Olympic team. Yeah, I mean, he was, you know, he was one match away from making the Olympic trials this year as a sophomore in high school. So I think he should consider himself, you know, a legit contender in there. To me, he feels like a Hawkeye. He feels like kind of their next Spencer Lee for all the reasons we said. He's young guns guy, Pennsylvania guy, machine gun mindset, which plays right into, you know, your, your stereotypical Iowa style, really hard hand fight and pushing the pace. And if you want to be the face of a program, you want to have the most fanfare around you as possible, the most hype, that place is still Iowa. Yeah, go. Carver Hawkeye Arena is still, you know, still the most electric venue. So, yeah, we'll see. I'm, I'm curious. J.D., you're the Iowa homer, so of course you're going to say Iowa is uh, the, a great destination. But as an East Coaster, I'll back you up. I think it's uh, every interaction or every uh, person that you meet from Iowa has a wrestling story, and that's just not the case even at a place like Pet State with all their recent success. Uh, it's still – not as prevalent on their campus. As far as I can tell, maybe things are changing a little bit, but Iowa is that school where you can be the wrestling star at a different level than other campuses. 
like I said, I bumped into someone on on Rainy Street a couple months ago. I started talking talking wrestling with them here in uh here in Texas. They knew Kevin Dresser, so there you go. You go to Rainy Street where all the bars are, where all the cool kids hang out and talk <laughs> wrestling. Just wear some Iowa gear. <laughs> it's like it's Iowa City, baby. We talked about how Bassett and Forrest are are one and two. They're teammates. They're friends. Uh, I I think I already know the answer to this, but David, I want to hear your perspective. Like. I don't think they're a package deal, right? But how likely do you think it is that they go to the same school? I think they are going to have 100% independent recruiting processes. And that's one of the reasons I'm really excited to see even like day one of recruiting that, that Tyler and Connor are going to follow. Like what are, what are some of the differences? But I, I really do think that these guys are great friends, great training partners, but they're going to approach this this recruitment process extremely differently and they even approach their training now differently to a certain extent you know they don't they don't go everywhere and and train together all the time um obviously when they're at bishop mccourt when they're back home in pa they're training all the time but you know jacks forest he'll do camps at oklahoma state you know and like especially likes training with uh zoe down there bo bass you mentioned the the ohio state camp they these guys are very different people they're they're just they're very different in how they i think think about life and social media and, and, and all that thing. They have a ton of things in common too. They're, they're similar in a lot of ways. Uh, but I, I do think these processes are going to be drastically different. And if they end up in the same place, um, you know, it's possible, but 